Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing Jenny Chess in the three minute pool on ICC. We're hitting Jenny Chess with uh, Scandinavian, of course, and they play d4. I usually meet that with e5. Who is this player? She is a WIM unknown. Okay, let's go bishop g4 and pin that knight. There's a lot of tension in the center. It's likely to be released sometime soon. Let's just take that. Because if they take with the queen, I can play bishop takes f3. And don't I just win a piece here? We're close to it. I mean, they have queen e3 check, bishop check. e4. What is going on already? b5? Isn't b5 quite good for me? Hold your horses, Jenny Chess. If queen c6, there's bishop b5. Clearly that's bad. What about b5? I think that wins a piece, because if bishop takes b5, there's c6. And as far as I can tell, I'm escaping with an extra piece. If queen takes b5, we trade, and then I put the bishop back on c6. So I think they had to play queen Check. e3, and I was ready to play bishop e4 in that case. All right, so they're going to do this. Now I think here, this is a three-minute game, so of course i got to play a little faster. Bishop d3 is going to be played, and then bishop takes g2. I'm not seeing white's compensation. Yeah. If bishop c4, I made them on d1. That would be a nice way to end this game. Quick win. Weirder stuff definitely happens in the three-minute pool. It's just like you inch closer to craziness. <laughs> so on bishop d3, I'm going to take on g2. I'm going to be greedy and grab that pawn and make sure white can't cast a lot of danger. They take, huh? All right, well, now I can just take here, though. Grab that. Queen takes f3 might have been possible, but I'm not going to be that greedy. Develop. Yeah, let's just develop. Check. And develop again. Mm -hmm. Let's go queen c4. And just stop them from castling for now. I'm a little worried about knight e4, but I don't think it hurts me in this given position. Okay, castle. Looks good. We can always parry something like queen in pretty easily. Uh, knight f5 followed by rook e8 check. How about that? Just double checking here. Hmm. Now nah, let's just develop normal. If they castles, I have I have b4, kicking the knight away, and then I can go after this a2 pawn, I believe. Queen takes a2, threaten mate. If knight f6, I just sidestep it. Rook takes g7. Oh no, rook takes g7 might be good. <laughs> oh, ooh, they resign, but is rook takes g7 hurting me? Rook takes g7, king takes g7, queen h6, king h8, queen f6, king g8. Ooh. They didn't see that move, but that, that might be painful. So take. I, if I decline it, they, they take here anyways, and the queen is coming in with decisive effect. Check. Right? Like, I just get checkmated Check in this mate. case. So if rook takes Check. g7, I have to take with the king, and I mean, my king is completely exposed here. Let's say check. check. Now, if here, then knight f6 just wins, so I have to go to this square. Where's the checkmate for white? Check, check here. Thing is, my knight always comes to assist. But what if even like a slow move like this? Giving the king an escape square and just threatening queen g7 mate. What a bizarre ending. <laughs> I probably should have just played a safe move, like... You know, right here, for instance, maybe just knight g6 and block the g-file, ensure that rook takes g7 can't be played. Let's take a look at the end. Okay, I am winning. Rook takes g7 does not Check. work for white, but for sure, white should try this move. Then maybe I'll blunder into checkmate. Okay, it looks marginally scary, Check. but the computer thinks I always have a way out. Bishop h6. 
Bishop e5 is a nifty defense. Okay, so the queen is stopped from coming to g7. And again, rook g1 is always met by knight g6, and black holds on. Hmm, almost gave me a heart attack at the end. So, yeah, this, this d4 line I don't think is very good against the Scandi. Like, e5 is a good way to meet it. Black can also play, like, knight c6 if they want, but e5 is an equalizer. And there's a line, if they take on e5, you can trade Check. queens and then play knight c6 and just gambit a pawn temporarily. And this is also very good for black. I would recommend it. So this happened, and I took on d4. Yeah, probably knight c3 is the best move here for white. Exploiting the pin, because I can't play pawn takes. My queen drops. But instead, they took here, allowing this. And now I think white check. has to play this move. Queen e3, check. And even though I can play bishop e4, I'm pinned here. So it looks like they have good chances to get the material back. Yeah, f3, and they will regain the piece. I think black is still looking pretty good here, but white's going to get that bishop back. Check. Instead, though, they played queen a4, which should just be bad after b5. If bishop takes f3, I can even take here. It's cool. Desperado with the queen. If they Check. take here, I come back. Queen c6, and I'm up a piece. Check. So instead, they did this. I played c6. They took here. I took with the pawn. Yeah, Check. this was all fine, I think. Castle. Here, rook takes g7 Check. doesn't work nearly as well because Check. my king isn't uh, as exposed and white doesn't have as many pieces that can join the attack, potentially. So, instead, bishop d2 was played. Knight bc6. I think I thought a little bit too long here. I was thinking about knight f5 because I like the idea of attacking the queen and also coming here. But I was trying to figure out what would happen in the event of queen g5. Because if I defend the knight like that, there is this move. Kind of silly to even think about this. I should just develop or maybe even play that knight g6 move because that looks pretty safe. Not giving white anything down the file. So all in all, as played, I did fine, but the ending looked pretty scary. And if white had immediately played rook takes g7, I would have been frightened for the outcome of the game. <laughs> All right, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll be back again soon with another one. Bye, guys.